Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to learn about the Daybreak series from Fender. This was a limited edition in 2019 limited to 275 pieces. They made both a Stratocaster and a Telecaster. But what makes this limited edition run interesting is the Daybreak Olympic white finish with matching headstock cap. I mean, take a look at this picture. When the sun is rising in the mountains, you have this really bright white center of the sun coming up with some gold as well as some orange hues on the outside, and these instruments encapsulate all of those different colors. So the white finish is that really bright sun, but then the gold hardware symbolizes the yellow that outlines that. Look at this neck here that kind of has some orange hues to it. So the main two features about this run is the finish itself and the gold hardware, essentially. And both of these are part of the Made in Japan traditional series, and they feature 60 specs. And if you're saying, hey, these things are pretty cool, how much do they cost? They retail at $899 each, and they come with a gig bag. But here's the thing. I think the Telecaster is actually slightly cooler than the Stratocaster because it gets black binding, which I think makes it a better buy because you get a little bit extra on that one, I think. Because it's not just binding along the top. They also bound the back of the instrument, whereas the Stratocaster, yeah, you get an extra pickup and more tonal opportunities, but as far as additional blingage besides the gold hardware and things like that, you don't have anything super special. But then again, you can't really bind a Stratocaster. You can, but you lose some of these comfort features and it just doesn't quite look traditional anymore. So these are actually a pretty cool little limited edition run right here, but what are my first impressions of this Stratocaster? The first thing I noticed when I picked this thing up, it's the side headstock profile view. It's such a cool look because you get the white headstock face with the golden finish on the neck, which matches the golden tuners. It's just so beautiful. But the reason why this finish is so golden is they have a really thick gloss finish over this. So if you prefer a satin finish neck because it's not as sticky, you're not going to like these guitars as much because this is a really thick feeling finish. And as we were talking about earlier with the Daybreak theme, that adds in the orange glow that you need. And something else cool that I noticed about this being a thicker gloss finish is it seems to actually help fight fret sprout because this is the first kind of mid-tier fender that I've had where I can honestly say there is no fret sprout on this. I definitely cannot feel the fret ends through the finish. So it's kind of a trade-off in that aspect, but you could always just sand down the finish on the back of the neck to make it play a little bit quicker if that's something you would prefer. For me, I don't care if it's a gloss finish or a satin finish. I can play them all. Cosmetically, the cream finish matched with the white pickguard and the dark rosewood board. It reminded me of the Wayne's World Stratocaster Excalibur. Now that one doesn't have gold hardware and a matching painted headstock, but it's got that similar vibe going on for it. And that one was from 1964, but this is based on 60 specs, so kind of close. It also might remind you of a Mary Kay Stratocaster, except for you don't necessarily have the see-through finish. Wouldn't that have been cool if they would have done that on these? If you get it in the light just right, you can kind of see some lines in it, which I think are mineral streaks within the wood. I could be wrong, but it seems the finish might have sunk into the body a little bit in some areas. And for some crazy reason, maybe it's just because I was talking to somebody else about Buckethead signature guitars today, it kind of has a Buckethead vibe to it. You've got the white headstock, you've got the white body, just throw some red kill switch buttons on here. Have at it, who cares? But being a white finish, I notice everything shows up on this guitar. And when I pulled it out of the factory gig bag, there were a few black splotches on the finish. I'm assuming those came from the gig bag, but they just polished right off. It was nothing serious. But if there's anything on your guitar, you're gonna know it. <laughs> the white finish definitely helps showcase that. But I thought it was a nice touch that the Fender logo actually has some sparkles to it as well. But the last thing that I want to mention about this instrument, I instantly noticed that the arm contour is completely different. It just looks like they took a completely flat surface and went zoop like this. Because if we look at this Custom Shop Stratocaster, it's more of a rounded beveled edge right here. It's definitely not completely flat. And you can see that the contour doesn't quite stand out as much as on these American ones as it does on this Made in Japan one. So that was just a feature that I instantly noticed between these two. Not saying one's better than the other, it's just something I noticed. But to learn a little bit more about this instrument, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take a look at its individual specs and parts. 
Inside the Daybreak Stratocaster, it was definitely eye-opening taking a look at this Made in Japan Fender versus all the USAs that I've seen. So first off, you don't have a bunch of modding potential here because it's actually routed just for three single coil pickups. So you couldn't put a humbucker in any of these positions unless you did additional modifications. And you'll notice that there's no barcodes or identifying marks within this body anywhere. So that's pretty different, but I did see a few structural deficiencies right here. You can see where the wood's kind of chipped up along the edges. Got a little bit right there. It just seems to be at all the corners. I'm not sure if that's due to like a dull router bit or something, but everything else, I mean, it's looking pretty good. That's only a few small areas, and let's be honest, does it matter at all? No. But it's just kind of nice to know what attention to detail goes into making these instruments and what is passed off as acceptable. Moving on to the pickguard itself, it appears that we have, I believe these are what, ceramic magnets, something like that. It looks very similar to what comes in a glary guitar, but I'm guessing these are slightly better quality. I didn't think these pickups sounded bad, but I didn't think they sounded overly fantastic either. You're not going to have any problems using this, that's for sure. They call them vintage style single coil strat pups. So that's not really a super fancy name for them, but they're going for a vintage sound, likely 60s. As far as the pots go, you have quality CTS 250Ks. It looks like a little June bug capacitor and a five-way toggle switch right there. But I'm noticing that the type of wire that they use in these is different. The American-made ones have that like cloth exterior over them, so they feel a little bit more substantial in my opinion, whereas this is just, you know, regular wire stuff. And one more thing I want to point out. Hey, do you see this guy right here? That's a screw sticking through the back of the instrument for the trem plate cover. <laughs> I thought that was funny. At first I thought it was like a grounding wire cut short. But here's our tremolo system. It's vintage in style. It's got the six points right here and the individual fender saddles. But take a look at this cool little short trem bar. I love that this is gold too. It really just adds to the whole aesthetic of this thing. As far as the output jack goes, you know, nothing too crazy going in here, but we can see the basswood body that this is made of. And I believe that's the only area on this guitar where you can actually see through to the bare wood. Most strat bodies are either alder or ash, so having a basswood is slightly different here. But the jack itself seems pretty good. I want to know whose bright idea it is to put the plastic underneath all of this. How are you supposed to get that off? Most normal people wouldn't know how to tear apart their guitar or have a knob puller to do that properly. But how do you guys feel about these gold screws? On the stock photos online, I wasn't sure if those actually worked or not, but in person, trust me, they work. They're beautiful. But moving on from the basswood body, you have a traditional rosewood fretboard paired on a maple neck. And this is a vintage style strat with seven and a quarter radius up and down the fretboard. And let me tell you, being spoiled with all those compound radius guitars that I've had from Fender, switching to the true vintage style, it's like, oh, that's why they do stuff like that. But we do have 21 frets here and you just have these white little dots. And I was surprised to read that the nut is made of bone. That's a pretty nice feature they got there, but our nut width itself is 1.63 inches, and by the 12th it's 2.02. First fret neck depth, 0.86 inches, and it gets pretty chunky, 0.95. Fender calls this their U-shaped neck. It's not like super baseball bat thick, but it's definitely a chunky chunker. And nothing funny with the scale, 25 and a half inches. Moving on to the face of the headstock, it's also painted over white. And last time I had a painted headstock fender, I was telling you guys how it was a little bit uneven. This one actually appears to be done very well. People say these made in Japan fenders are actually a great bang for your buck because the build quality is terrific. And I've got to agree, this thing is nearly flawless as far as it being built. The fret work is nice as well as the body. I didn't notice any major blemishes. It just seems that they saved the premium parts for the USA guitars, whereas these, they're still good parts. Don't get me wrong, they're just not quite as premium level. But the tuners are vintage in style. It's the kind you put the string down and then wrap around. But I really love the logo on this guy. I'm not sure if they're all like this, but it's got sparkle to it. So it's a sparkly Fender Stratocaster. Moving on to the back side here. Once you have the trem plate cover removed, this is what you're looking like here. A pretty decent sized block right there. And I noticed a branding mark right there. I'm not quite sure what that is, but maybe somebody in the comments can tell us. 
But the back plate is also triple ply. It's kind of got a cool white, black, white cream thing going on. And the rest is just pretty basic Stratocaster stuff. You got your comfort cut for your belly right there and you get a golden neck plate. Now I had somebody asking me, why don't I take the fender necks off now anymore? Well, I'm just not gonna do it on the new ones because I know the neck is original. I don't have to change anything unless there's some unscrupulous fender dealers brand new. But for the used ones, I definitely will just for the protection of everybody here. But this maple neck, I love this full gloss finish. It might not feel as good to play as the satin finish, but I just love the color and how it makes the neck look so golden. And you've got beautiful wood grain in here. And remember how earlier I was saying you could see the wood grain lines underneath the finish? This headstock is a good example of that. You see these lines running up and down. It's so hard to be able to tell when you guys would be able to see it, but you can just barely see those lines on the headstock. But you've got the vintage style gold tuners and your serial number here, JD19010211, made in Japan. This example weighs 7 pounds, 14.7 ounces, so just a hair under 8 pounds here. Let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. <laughs> about this limited edition Fender Stratocaster, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Was it my favorite Strat that I've ever played? No. But what I can say, it is a very quality guitar. I mean, there was nothing that I found in here that I felt was inferior. The quality control was good, the types of woods they used, they look nice, and they were well-crafted. 
And heck, you even get a bow nut on this thing. So really, the only thing I could see somebody wanting to upgrade in this would be the pickups. And I'm not saying that the pickups are necessarily bad or anything either. They just felt like they were missing a little something. But remember, I'm pretty spoiled. I've had a bunch of high-end strats as my first Stratocasters. I really think that's about the only thing you would have to do because the pots, they're quality CTS 250K and you've got a quality five-way switch. So it'd be really easy to mod this thing into like a really great guitar. But coming from the factory, it's not too bad either. If you like the vintage style specs of the 60s styled Stratocaster. So whether or not you should buy this guitar, it really comes down to looks. Do you love the look of this guitar? If so, you're gonna buy it anyways. It wouldn't matter if I told you this guitar was trash. And the fact that these are a limited edition of 275, that's actually a really limited production. I'm surprised they went as small as that. I think these are gonna hold their value pretty well and people will seek these out in the future just cause you know, they're kind of quirky, kind of interesting and beautiful guitars. So in the end, would I recommend this guitar? Yes. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Fender Daybreak Stratocaster. This one's already been spoken for because somebody reached out to me and said, hey, can you help me get a good deal on one of these brand new? So if there's a brand new guitar you're interested in, feel free to hit me up. Nine times out of 10, I can get you a better price or at least get you enough to save like the sales tax or something. But to end out this review, let's go ahead and do a blacklight test. Under blacklight, we don't have too much going on here, but you can see the pickup covers glow as do the knobs and the switch tip. And what's even beautiful besides just these guys glowing, your side dot inlays also fluoresce under blacklight. That could be a nice little stage trick for you if you need to see in a dark stage, just have a black light over top of you. But as far as the finish, yeah, it's just your standard very light glowing here. Nothing too crazy, but kind of cool to see nonetheless. If you do purchase one of these brand new, they come in a Fender gig bag. Now, I've got to say, I've had a few of these Fender gig bags, and it's at this point where I want to say, Fender, your gig bags are terrible. They're basically just little dust covers. I mean, do they have some padding? Yes, they have a little bit of padding, but I would not personally gig in this. This is a territory where Gibson definitely has them beat. I mean, look how thick and padded these guys are. And they've actually developed a new kind of like a gig bag case. So this is like an old style. So I think Fender could step their game up a little bit. I'm sure there's enough profit margin in here for a nicer gig bag or maybe even a very cheap case. But here you just have a zipper and inside here you have a little bit of paperwork. And these are your backpack straps for these. I hope you troglodytes enjoyed tuning into this episode. Again, if you're in the market for a brand new guitar, feel free to hit me up and I can see what I can get with my pricing discounts through various dealers. Sometimes it's just saving you the sales tax, but hey, you also get a free video out of the deal. Thank you troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.